join the meeting. Roseanne. Join the meeting. I am Tessakaya Gabriel, Executive Director of Pathways to Peace. Welcome to our sacred circle, a circle that reaches around our world and beyond. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Naya, for that very beautiful, moving requiem that you composed in honor of Avon. When I listen to that music, I can hear the angels sing. We'll be hearing from Mr. Naya later in our ceremony. Beloveds, we are gathered here in this holy space to honor our beloved Avon and celebrate her wisdom, her work, and her life. Each one of us has been touched by having Avon be a part of our life in some way. And as a result, our lives have been forever changed. I want you to know that the ceremony was created from and rooted in deep abiding love for Avon, for all gathered here, and for those who came here with us and couldn't be with us and for our world. There were so many love offerings that have been poured out in Avon's honor to contribute to this ceremony and make it possible. Out of a profound love of Avon and a wish to honor her. First, I want to just express I want to express just deep appreciation for our media team. That's Becky Suzik and Rick Buckley. Um, everything that you see in this moment and what has been created to make the ceremony special 
has been created by these two amazing individuals. They've been working diligently to create the videos, to get the word out, and to now be in service in the background to make this ceremony happen. There is more magic to come. So thank you, Rick, and thank you, Becky. In quiet time, I opened up my heart and asked who should lead this sacred ceremony. What came to mind immediately were the three names of the ministers that are going to guide this ceremony in this moment. They are known and dedicated peace builders. They have a long history with Pathways to Peace and each has a deep and abiding relationship with Avon. So at this time, I'd like to introduce to you and welcome our ministerial team, the Reverend Charles Gibbs, the Reverend Deborah Moldau, and Dr. Dot Naver. And so Charles, would you please begin? Thank you, Tez, and thank you to everyone who is here, uh, whether it's this evening, this afternoon, this morning, wherever in the world you are. We know that Avon's heart uh, and her vision and her presence were more than big enough to encompass this world and radiate outward. She has uh, been freed from the physicality of her presence uh, on this earth, and there is no place in the universe now that Avon Madison isn't. Uh, and especially tonight, this afternoon, this morning, she is here with us in our hearts. Um, this is the Christian season of Advent, at least for parts of Christianity. One of, one of my favorite Advent hymns has this line, and let each heart prepare a home where such a mighty guest may come. Let each heart prepare a home where such a mighty guest may come. Avon was a presence of that mighty guest. And she shone so brightly in this lifetime. I would like to invite us to take just a moment, a moment of silence to invite Avon more deeply into our hearts. And maybe while we're inviting to remember one time Avon touched us to our core and enlivened us, enriched our lives, and called us out of ourselves into something better, something we might not have ever felt we could aspire to. So let's just take a moment. Come, Avon, in your spirit, into the core of our being and into this assembly in this moment. Terry Paula. Join the meeting. Avon knew better than most that these are hard times. Let's not confuse ourselves that her ability to see abundant possibility in any way denied the challenges of the time we live in and a recognition that these are hard times and likely to get harder. But she was also clear that each of us individually and all of us collectively have a choice to make about how we relate to the hard times we're in and the hard times to come. And for Avon, her choice, as I experienced, it was one of profound, profound, 
unexhaustible service. Even when her body was abandoning her, her energy, her perseverance, her commitment did not flag. Uh, we aren't here to follow Avon. We, we can't claim her mantle. <laughs> Say, oh, I'll be the next Avon. But we can identify in ourselves that place that she touched. We can find in ourselves the perseverance, the vision, the hope, the commitment to be transformed and transforming in our presence in this lifetime. We are our unique selves and yet each of us carry within us some part of Amen. As we carry within us some part of everyone else on this call and everyone else on this earth. Avon called us to find that part and connect and connect and to connect. And the pathways to peace are pathways in finding those connections. And so Avon, tonight we celebrate you. We celebrate your life. We celebrate your presence. May this be a joyous time and tears are welcome. Tears of loss and tears of gratitude and tears of joy, any kind of tears are welcome. And at this point, I would like to pass the baton to my dear friend, Dot Maver, and invite her to carry us on the next leg of this journey. Bless you, Charles. So beautiful, so loving. Gratitude and gratitude to everyone. Welcome everyone. It is a great joy to offer this Global Silent Minute honoring Avon Madison. Avon was a dear sister and a tireless server on behalf of the greater good. And she understood the power of silence. In fact, we often participated together in the daily 12 noon peace wave and then the 9 p.m. GMT Global Silent Minute. And I can hear Avon saying to us, when we honor one, we honor all. This Global Silent Minute is for all. The Global Silent Minute is galvanizing humanity to recognize the necessity to embed a new paradigm, to create the culture of peace so that the challenges and conflicts are resolved before they escalate to violence. The inspiration for the original Silent Minute was born on a battlefield near Jerusalem in World War I, when an officer who knew he would not survive the war asked his comrade, Wellesley Tudor Polk, to find a way for him and the millions like him to assist daily from the other side through the power of silence to end a greater war he saw coming. That way became the Big Ben Silent Minute, launched in World War II. Its daily rhythmic impact was acknowledged as significant in assisting to end the war and in demonstrating the awesome power of silence as a spiritual weapon. In fact, after the war ended, a high-ranking German officer said, we couldn't find a way to counter your secret weapon. It was preceded by ringing of bells, and I believe you called it the Silent Minute. As Avon well appreciated, our spiritual weapon is harnessing the power of silence in selfless service to be used for the benefit of all, to ultimately bring an end to all warring, to bring peace to humankind and all life. The power of silence is greater than we know. We regenerate through silence. On this day, we dedicate our Global Silent Minute to honor Avon Madison, who through her steadfast service on behalf of the common good, demonstrated a pathway to peace. Let us prepare. 
we take a deep breath as we imagine healing and peace activated within our own hearts. And we link our hearts across distance. Now we take another moment and we invite all those on the other side of the veil to assist with our intention for peace in the world. We are particularly mindful of Avon Madison, Wellesley Tudor Pole, Masahisa Goy, and all those who are cooperating from the other side of the veil. And we invite them now to cooperate with our sacred intention of silence as action for peace on earth. When you hear the Tibetan singing bowl, we have entered a minute of sacred silence. May peace prevail on earth. Over to you, dear Deborah. Thank you, Dot. How beautiful to bring us into coherence through the silent minute honoring Ava Madison. Thank you. And it's so appropriate because as all of you who have joined to celebrate Avon today, as all of you know, her personal pathway to peace was a deeply spiritual one. And that prayer, may peace prevail on earth, was especially close to her heart. The prayer, may peace prevail on earth, came to us from Japan. Uh, stewarded in the beginning by an ongoing organization now at the base of Mount Fuji called Biako Shinko Kai. And uh, all of us heard during that beautiful slideshow of Avon's life, the magnificent requiem that the president of Biako Shinko Kai, Mr. Tomohiko Naya, uh, composed in honor of Avon. Biako uh, is a very special organization. The people there are extremely pure of heart. It's led by the luminous Masami Sayanji with the able assistance of her radiant daughter, Yuka. And the people in Japan at Biako have always held Avon in very high esteem. And when the World Peace Prayer Society was launched to uh, spread the prayer further into the English speaking world, Avon was honored by being placed on the founding advisory board. Avon's uh, conduit 
between San Francisco and Japan over many decades was her dear friend, Fumi John Stewart, who is uh, the current executive director of May Peace Prevail on Earth International. And it is my honor to introduce you to Fumi and give you a little glimpse of Mount Fuji in Japan. Thank you so much, Deborah. And um, my heart is so full. I'm going to try to keep it together here. <laughs> um, because, uh, yes, tears will be flowing. Um, Sherry so Paula. We are all here. Join the meeting. We are all here gathered because Avon has touched our lives in so many profound ways. And we are so, so grateful to her. And as um, Deborah mentioned, Avon was deeply connected with um, the late Masahisa Goi of Japan, who authored the universal message and prayer, May Peace Prevail on Earth. And she was such an instrumental advisor when we first opened up our office in the United States. And she served on the uh, founding advisory board. And I can truly say that she was godmother to the May Peace Prevail on Earth movement. So, so grateful to her. Um, and on, on a personal note, you, I'd like to say a few words um, that I will always remember her sweet, sweet voice as she would answer each phone call we made and greeting me with the words, she would say, Fumi Soku Kaminari, which means Fumi is a divine being. And I used to, um, in return, reply to her greeting and, and say, Avon Soku Kaminari, Avon is a divine being. And these are the words uh, that are used for the sacred mudras practiced at Mount Fuji for the awakening of humanity, which Avon so, so treasured. And she, she practiced these mudras herself. So it really gives me so much joy and honor to introduce um, to you my colleagues from Fuji Sanctuary, which is the spiritual home of May Peace Prevail on Earth movement at Byako Shinko Kai, at the foot of Mount Fuji. And um, they will would like to offer the divine spark in mudra in celebration of Avon's life. So thank you and may peace prevail on earth. Hello, I'm Tomohiko Naya, president of Byako Shinko Kai. I am honored to join today's celebration of Avon Mattison and her divine spark. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Yuka Sayonji, Deputy Chairperson of Byako Shinko Kai. We are now here from Fuji Sanctuary, the main dojo. And Miss Madison has visited here and offered her prayer for the world from this place. We will always remember her dedication and her life work for peace, and it will stay with us in our hearts. We will always remember the beautiful presence and the loving being that she is, that whenever she entered the room, she changed the whole energy to the pure and bright energy that she is. We will always miss the physical body of, of Miss Madison on earth, but we also know that her spirit is even working harder for peace and is with us always. And so today, in the memory of Miss Madison, we would like to perform the Divine Spark in. Thank you.
Thank you so very much, uh, Fumi. And we just bow in honor to our Japanese guests. Uh, just deep bows of gratitude. It is my honor and delight to now invite our co-founder of Pathways to Peace to share the Pathways to Peace founding invocation and her reflections. I give to you Joni Sirodelli. Joni. Thank, thank you, Chazakaya. The founding invocation. Om, om, om. May the peace and the blessing of the holy ones pour forth over the worlds, rest upon pathways to peace, on the work and the workers, protecting, purifying, energizing, and strengthening. There is a peace which passeth understanding. It abides in the hearts of those who live in the eternal. There is a power that maketh all things new. It lives and moves in those who know the self as one. May the rhythm of that peace vibrate within pathways to peace and in the heart of every worker. May the rhythm of that creative power resound within pathways to peace and in the lives of all who serve here, awakening, transmuting, and giving birth to that which ought to be. May the chalice we are building become a focal point for the descent of spiritual force, which filling it and overflowing to the world draws towards itself all those whose work lies here. May the consciousness of the group become ever more at one, the many lights, one light in the light of the self and in the spirit of peace. May the aspiration and the dedication of the group burn as a clear flame in the service of the Holy Ones. May the love and the light and the life of the one life pour through this center, cleansing it from all evil and attracting all good. This was given to AAB by the Master DK in the very early days of their long association, where she and her close co workers were founding the Lucius Trust, the Arcane School, and the Lucius Publishing Company as outer instruments of service to the plan of the Great Ones. Avon was a dear friend and sister. And we worked together for over 40 years. That's a long time. She was my mentor in co-founding Pathways to Peace when I left my corporate job and was venturing out on my own. Changed my life. Avon worked tirelessly right up until the day she passed. And one of her major accomplishments was initiating the field of peace building beyond peacemaking or peacekeeping, peace building. She was instrumental in the creation, consulting to and expansion of many peace related organizations, including the United Religions Initiative, World Peace Prayer Society, Praxis Peace Institute, and on and on. She guided Pathways to Peace to become a UN NGO with consultative status and built an incredible team of representatives there, including many young people she mentored and so many others. Her work and connections were key to bringing the Peace Day into our lives of people all over the world. She brought a spiritual quality and deep knowing that was unique and profound to all that she did. And she is deeply missed on earth as she creates from on high. Finally, 
I had the great privilege of working with Avon, who inspired me to join her in writing a memoir about our deep friendship and work over these 40 years. Look for it soon. A tale of two star sisters and pathways to peace. Thank you so much, Joni. That was just beautiful. And, and the love that's conveyed from your heart um, just touches us all deeply. Thank you. So when we were dreaming about this ceremony and how what we wanted to convey and how we might convey it. The notion oh, came through. No, 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 no. That, oh, that. The notion came through that wouldn't it be wonderful if we could actually hear Avon sharing her wisdom about the things that she most cared about. And wouldn't it be wonderful if we could share more deeply in her own words, her story and the origins of made what that actually made her this extraordinary peace leader. And so through the magic of Rick Buckley and Becky Susick, we now have a video in her own words. Thank you. I was born in 1941. Uh -huh. I had the question, why are we fighting? Why is everyone killing each other and devastating the earth? in the name of peace. Right. <clears throat> and so at that time, I had an extraordinary experience. I'm very curious. All right. Um, this is the deeper story that I really tell. It occurred when I was about three and a half, going toward four. There was an experience that I had in answer to my question that um, basically showed the planet um, as in its entirety, and showed that all life on earth was interconnected and living as one interconnected life and how this earth was part of this entire solar system and this solar system was part of other solar systems and this galaxy was part and part of the galaxy and how this galaxy was part of other galaxies and and in, in these beautiful sort of septonates there were seven of each i don't know why at that didn't at that time and then uh, brought back to earth and the, was shown the evolution of life from single cell organisms all the way to what humanity would be like in the 21st century and beyond and at that time uh i made a commitment to to dedicating my life to peace the assignment was that um, it was important for an idea to come to humanity. And that was the idea of Pathways to Peace, that everyone and everything is a pathway to peace. This is the 40th anniversary of the 1981 resolution that established the International Day of Peace. And literally, to come together to agree on every word in a UN resolution to establish a universal day of peace, which was the first time peace had ever been mentioned since the opening, the charter was signed in 1945 in San Francisco, establishing the United Nations. In 1982, a group met at the place where the charter of the UN was signed and began what is known as the peace wave, minute of silence, moment of peace, to show that silence is action and to continue that at noon in every time zone around the world in a unit of action of very diverse expressions but with one common purpose one common minute of an action of peace and for a, a higher goal that will benefit all beings that includes all circles of life 
peace through unity and the understanding that practical actions of peace in a collaborative, conscious, unitive way is the only way forward. And when we take people who have a very deeply spiritual understanding but become activists in a collective way, that this is the voice of humanity. Peace is not a noun, it's a verb. Peace is an active, conscious state of concerted action that is for the benefit of all beings. And that includes all circles of life. And that led to what is, was going to happen in 1984, again in San Francisco with our sister city of Assisi, Italy. And different people and United Nations organizations and all of that, associations rather, began to connect with their sister cities and with their networks around the world. And an event happened in San Francisco that was all done by volunteers with the support of the city of San Francisco, the mayor of San Francisco, the board of supervisors, parks and recreation, um, and just on and on it went. And it was so extraordinary that there was such support and diversity within that. There was a flag ceremony. There were speeches by various people representing different organizations. And there was a vigil at Grace Cathedral that began with the indigenous ceremony for the International Day of Peace and then involve people from all different pathways of different religions and faiths to be able to present what they were doing in prayer and ceremony at Grace Cathedral for this vigil. There was great diversity and that most of the attendance was broadcast by television. And then what also was so important was that at noon, there was the peace wave. It was the first time that a minute of silence has ever been broadcast over radio and television, ever. And the local newspaper, the leading newspaper actually in San Francisco said, it was the silence that was heard around the world. And that has continued to be carried on. And then fast forward to 1986 at the United Nations, where it was also the International Year of Peace proclaimed by the United Nations. The Secretary General, Assistant Secretary General Robert Mueller, and the President of the General Assembly, with the ringing of the peace bell, began a very special ceremony where they inaugurated something called the Peace Messenger Awards. And these Peace Messenger Awards were go to non-governmental organizations and to cities who had already made the International Day of Peace so significant. We are doing this for future generations. We do not know what the future holds. We cannot be attached to the outcomes. I don't, I, I knew when I was very young that I might never see what my assignment was come to completion in this lifetime. I, I've constantly had to live in that reminder. But it also connects with you, with what Kurt and many of us do connected with the UN, is that the UN is in its 76th year, but what it contains is a template of the divine plan for the unified souls of all nations to come together in synthesis in a synergistic way that changes the course of history from a culture of war, violence, and separation to a culture of, of an enduring regenerative culture of peace that benefits all being and, and, and has a full spectrum of diversity and unity.
Mm, so beautiful. So very beautiful. Thank you, Rick. And thank you, Becky, for taking that dream and making it a reality. How oh, wonderful mm. to be in the presence of Avon's wisdom once again. Thank mm. you. Mm. So now we are delighted to welcome Tammy Briggs, a therapeutic harpist who has often been part of Pathways to Peace events. Through the vibrations of the harp, the intention of Tammy's music is to help you connect with your own inner peace so that you can radiate it out to help bring peace and calm to the world. It is a joy to welcome you, Tammy. Thank you, Dot. And it's really such an honor and such a uh, privilege to be with you all um, in this service. I have chosen a medley of two songs, Pachelbel's Canon and Still, Still, Still. Pachelbel's came to me as a symbolism or a merging of each of your um, earthly walks with Avon and now our connection to her in spirit world and the great beyond. And Still, Still, Still is a really beautiful, actually it's a holiday carol, yes. um, but it symbolizes to help us move into our own inner peace where we can connect as a dear community encircling Avon's majestic angelic spirit. Mm. And wow. in this vibration of deep inner peace, we are a pathway to peace, nice. which is Avon's dear legacy. Yeah. May peace prevail on earth.
Tammy, as always, that was just perfect and beautiful. Thank you so much. You know how much Avon cared about you and knew her. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I am delighted to bring forward Sheva Carr. And Sheva is the CEO of the Fiera Foundation. And she is the co-vice president of the Pathways to Peace Council of Directors. And Sheva is going to speak to us a little bit about keeping Avon alive in our hearts, as well as each of us is a pathway to peace. Sheva. Thank you so much, Tezekiah. Thank you all so very, very much. Um, I'm briefly going to share some images here. I first met Avon on a peace day when she was taking a heart math class I was teaching on the phone and she was calling in from the UN grounds and said so and proceeded to mute herself, but it was a moment of uh, that still moves me emotionally now of such intensity of magic that I had to go to my roster and look up who is this person and what is her name and what is her number and I googled her and found the Pathways to Peace website and proceeded to leave my first voicemail for her, which was, I wanna be you when I grow up. And in true Avon fashion, you can imagine that uh, when she called me back, the first thing she said was, well, I wanna be you when I grow up because Avon never let herself remain on a pedestal for long, if at all. And one of her remarkable capacities was to bring us all onto her equal, if that could even be an idea, playing field and collaborate. And uh, it's one of the capacities I commit to keeping alive. And we're gonna do a very short heart math exercise in a moment to support you to keep what you most love about Avon alive in your heart and in this world through you. But I want to give a very quick little bit of context to that, which is that Avon absolutely loved the geomagnetic science and neuroscience of peace that we were able to share with her from HeartMath. So the earth has this electromagnetic field around it, and so does every individual human being emanating from the heart. And those fields interact and what HeartMath researchers have shown that Avon was absolutely delighted by is that peace is a shift in the pattern of heart rhythm patterns that changes the human operating system from one of defense and attack and aggression to one of collaboration, unity and peace. And so we practiced the neuroscience and geomagnetics of this together. And I'm gonna share with you the tool that I did with Avon that first day we met on the phone, which is called the quick coherence technique. With Avon's passing from the body, we really have two choices. We can live into the story that Avon has died or we can live into the commitment that who she is lives on in us because she touched our hearts and we commit to carrying the lantern of that coherent peace in us. And so I invite you to focus your attention in the area around the heart, the chest area. Imagining the breath is flowing in through the heart and out through the heart, a little slower and deeper than usual. If you find it helpful, you can count as you breathe in and count as you breathe out so that your inhale and your exhale are even. 
this is a little physiological magic that creates peace. And with that heart focused breathing, if there's a quality even embodied or awakened in you, I invite you to breathe that quality now in through your heart and out through your heart and radiate it to all those here and all those in our worlds. So that as Avon's physical lantern has gone out, it becomes ignited in each of our hearts and the world is brighter. In closing, we want to acknowledge that it is a tribute and a testament to who Avon is, that there were many more people touched by her in her life that wanted to give voice to that tonight than time and space limitations of the physical world would allow. But like Avon's unlimited nature, we have created a way that each of you could pause in this reflection and create a video or a writing or capture an image and send it to us via two means. We have a Pathways to Peace web page, which we'll put in the chat, where you can submit your tributes to Avon, your images, your memories, your voice, living her legacy. And also on this page where you can also post videos if you would like here. These links will go in the chat and it will afford us all an opportunity to not just hold the memory of Avon right now, but a place to visit when we want to spend time with her through all of our expressions of her impact. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sheva. That was absolutely perfect. Thank you. And now I would like to invite um, Reverend Charles Gibbs and Dr. Dot Maver to come forward in reflection and presentation of our speakers. Wow, uh, what, what an amazing tribute already, uh, not only to Avon, but to us. That, that we were willing to listen, that we were willing to open our hearts, that we were willing to wake up a little bit more and stand forward. Sheva was so lovely uh, that, that we do have the capacity not only to keep Avon alive, but to bring ourselves and our world more alive. It's a real joy to get to welcome a series of speakers. I, I want to underline what Sheva said, that we, we do uh, in this realm live in the time and space limitations of the physical world, which means not only are we limited in the number of speakers and musicians, but the speakers and musicians are limited in the amount of time they have. We early on had uh, Dot ring her beautiful Tibetan bell to invite us into a minute of sacred silence. In the segments that follow, she is going to ring that same beautiful Tibetan bell to invite the speaker into sacred silence, to let the speaker know that the time for remarks has drawn to a close and what is left unsaid won't be lost. It will be with us, but the words can stop to make space for others. And to begin, it is my great privilege to welcome Avon's brother, Ray Madison. Ray, wherever you are in this lovely community, if you would please unmute your microphone and we welcome you.
All right. I want to make sure that the internet's working all right. Am I there? You're great. All right, I got to hurry up through this. I'm going to read from this. Since Avon's passing on October 13, Ursula and I have learned much about her life from the people who have been closest to her over the past 60 plus years. We learned that she was very passionate about peace and that she launched PTP over 40 years ago and participated in the planning of many unique events. There have been many testimonials as to her accomplishments and dedication to promoting world peace and conflict resolution. Avon and I grew up in Pasadena. I was two years ahead of Avon in school. About 65 years ago, our lives took different paths. I went away to college. Avon had gone east to private schools and returned in 58 for our last year of high school in San Marino. Our father's business failed and family suffered financial hardship. I went to work and attended college part-time and our mother went to work. Avon enrolled at UC Santa Barbara in 59, attended there for about a year or so, then moved to Washington, D.C. to work and attend college classes. She wanted to pursue a career in foreign service and diplomacy. She was, this is about the height of the Cold War and Cuban Missile Crisis, which likely triggered her motivation for the peace process. She developed many contacts in public service and diplomatic service. She met Naval Off Intelligence Officer Thomas Miller, whom she married in 64. Tom and Ava Miller moved to Monterey in 65 when Tom uh, went to the Naval Postgraduate School to pursue oceanography degree. After graduation, Tom was sent to Vietnam, was stationed at Thompson Air Force uh, Base in Saigon as intelligence officer shortly before the Tet Offensive. Avon went to Maryland to stay with another Navy family and attend University of Maryland. Tom and Avon then moved to Boston about 71 when Tom was reassigned to Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution in Massachusetts. Uh, when we returned to the U.S. after an 18-month assignment in Singapore, followed by vacation in Europe, we were met at Boston Airport by Avon, Tom, and our mother, Arliss. What a pleasant surprise. Walk out of customs and see that them. Uh, we stayed several days with Avon and toured Boston and before going to New York, pick up our car that we bought in Sweden, which was, and pick it up in Newark. Avon and Tom moved to Copenhagen about 73. Tom was assigned to the Danish Navy as oceanographic research officer. Uh, during our next two overseas assignments, during 73 to 75, while we were based in Switzerland and Germany, we visited Avon and Tom several times while visiting customers and reps in Scandinavia. By the way, I might mention that we learned a lot about our Norwegian heritage during my visits to, uh, to uh, Norway to visit customers. During the 74-75 Christmas New Year's holiday, we went to Val d'Isere for two weeks of skiing with Avon and Tom and two other couples with whom we shared a chalet. Quality time. In 75, Tom was posted to a sh ship based out of Pearl Harbor and was at sea all the time. Avon stayed with the family in Marin, then moved to San Francisco. We returned to California in 75, saw Avon a few times in Marin before I took a job in Santa Rosa. Avon and Tom divorced about 76. And we tried to stay in touch over the uh, years and got together sometimes in Marin and Pasadena with our mother. Avon was very private, uh, so Contact was mostly by phone and exchange of cards. She didn't really tell us a lot what was going on with her. That was her choice. I have been a Rotarian for 25 plus years. Even knew about Rotary's parallel program for peace and conflict resolution fellowships and scholarship via the Rotary Foundation. Many PTP members are also Rotarians. Most of you who are Rotarians probably recall the July 21 article on page 49 in the Rotary Magazine, The Gift of a New Peace Center. I hope that 
as part of AVEN's legacy that PTP and Rotary coordinate resources to support scholarships and fellowships for students who will have meaningful careers in peace development and conflict resolution. This happens, this needs to happen both internationally and domestically. Also important is the Rotary Youth Exchange Program where the peace process occurs at the grassroots level. Rotary's Interact and Rotary Rotaract youth programs are also critical for leadership development and training of young people who will make a difference. And as a former part-time college professor, I can uh, relate to education and scholarships. And in Rotary, I've also been on uh, scholarship interview committees. Um, so I thank you very much for listening. Ray, thank you for that beautiful, beautiful remembrance and tribute to your sister. Uh, uh, blessings to you uh, in the days ahead. Uh, thank you very much. I'm a cancer and cardio survivor, so I'm glad to be vertical and breathing. Well, may you continue to survive and shine your light in this world. Oh, my cardiologist, uh, Dr. Sanjay Dar, said, uh, Ray, God has bigger plans for you. Good, good, good. So, you know, we have our, our, our birth families and, and, and families come in all other, other ways as well. And I'd like to now welcome uh, uh, another dear member of Avon's family, uh, Masanko Banda. Uh, good evening, everybody. This is, um, as we have all heard, it's a difficult time, but it is also a wonderful time. She called me Bambo Masanko, which in my language is a greeting of respect and honor. She called me her son. On August 26, I lost my Malawian mother. October 13, which is half of 26, I lost my American mother. Thank you, Joni, for the reminder of this poem, which I will now read which was a, a, a poem that I sent to Avon in 1999. In light, I walk fearing nothing. You lead my hand through the darkness. Before I reach the corner, you have already looked. You wave me through. Deep waters do not scare me. You are a life jacket. The thorns of life barely penetrate their sting. You have removed like all children. With you, I am safe. I am your child, your godson, your brother, your friend, your vice president. All that you wish me to be, I am. All that I hope through you, I will. The unknown future, through your guidance, I know. In light, I walk fearing nothing. You lead my hand through the darkness. The stars through your eyes shine brightly. Your assurance like the setting sun. Every day, I know you are there. Ashe, aho, amen. Everywhere that I went, I carried this poem in my heart. When I worked with children in Croatia, when I worked with children peace building in Brazil, when I worked with children peace building in Ghana, when I worked with children peace building on the streets of Oakland in San Francisco, I knew that she was there. For 30 years, she teach, taught, coached, mentored, cared, always wondering, how are you? Where are you? How can I help? Anytime that I called her, Bambo Masanko, 
how can I help? And even when, as somebody said earlier, I think it was Deborah, even as her body failed her, she was always more concerned about us. Even, how are you? Oh, don't worry about me. How are you? So as we all celebrate, let's continue to shine the light that she turned on. Let's continue to walk the pathway that she has shown us. I remember Charles as we launched URI in the city of Bridges, the reminder that we are all connected. We are all a bridge to the next person, to the next country, to the next child, to the next parent. So as we celebrate in this time, let us continue to shine the light that Avon lit for us more than 40 years ago. Let us continue to walk the pathway to peace, to sing the songs, to tell the stories, to beat the drum, to dance the dances that link us all together and that remind us that each and every one of us is a pathway to peace. Oh. Thank you, dear Ms. Uncle. And, and I just, as you were talking, I had this image of you and your drum out under the African stars and Avon freed from the constraints of her body here on earth, dancing to your music. So may it be. Yes. It is now my great joy to invite a dear, 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 dear friend of Avon's, Joyce Arnowitz, to please share uh, her reflections. Avon and I have shared a personal relationship with one another for 43 years. We met in 1978 at my first restaurant, Andalou, in Marin County. And I remember so vividly, Avon would have her special table, writing letters, reading her special book weekly. We quickly developed our relationship with endless conversations about life, spirituality, and global peace. Together, we came up with a wonderful collaborative idea, evenings and conversations with peace leaders. The idea was to create intimate gourmet dinners featuring inspired peace leaders. And Marilyn King on the call tonight was one of our early speakers. Over the years, Avon was an integral part of our family. She was there at all of our benchmark celebrations, birthdays, Thanksgivings. Christmas and Jewish festivities. Over these many years, she even asked my father-in-law, peace activist, Mickey Arnowitz, if he would adopt her as his daughter. And she was present in our home, holding his hand as he made his transition. We had quarterly tea, tarot festivities with Sherry Garrison and Barbara Liss on this call. And even when Avon's health declined, she would ask us to FaceTime so that she could be included. Bert and I were able to take her out for her 80th birthday in April, which was a rare outing for Avon in the last few years. So it was very, very special. These family gatherings allowed Avon an important break from her long hours of dedication to peace work, and we will always cherish. In the mid eighties, I made a significant shift personally and professionally facilitating as a personal and intuitive business coach. Avon came over to my office as we invoked a sacred space in which I continued to work from. Our relationship evolved over these many decades. We oftentimes would share 
enriching late night calls, unwinding from our day's activities, supporting her body energetically to keep up the stamina of her commitment. There are several gifted healers on this call tonight that were part of this team. Avon loved and was inspired by everyone she came in contact with. She was always open to wisdom teaching, her deep desire to learn and mentor. I had the enormous privilege to spend the last 48 hours of her life with her. We spoke the morning of, and Michael, her impeccable nurse and caretaker, was with her the night before. There was a small group of us, Tez, Joni, Sandra, Marianne, and myself, who were present as we made those significant life decisions transitioning her in ritual. As she was lovingly moved to a comfort peace room, I was with her for hours until her spirit was clear. She had completed her mission here on earth. Her breathing demonstrated before she left this earth, a commitment to making sure she had done what she was here to do. Sandra and I honored her physical body in a beautiful ritual, anointing in gratitude, the body that allowed this spirit, her spirit to incarnate in this life. We can all rest assured that Ava knew she had completed her mission here and embodied all of the love that she expansively transitioned to the next level of her vision that she so deeply took to her heart and shared with the world and all of us. I love her as we all love her and I am so thankful to share this with you all. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. That was beautiful. And as you were talking, I'm, I'm starting to see it's not just a, a dance, uh, but there is a healing banquet that goes along with it. Uh, this is starting to get to be a, a wonderful celebration in this realm. And the next, can you hear the music of the folks on the other side as they're joining us in joy and celebration? Um, it, it's now my privilege to welcome another dear, dear, dear friend of Avon, Cynthia Jure. Cynthia, please. Cynthia, you're muted. Great. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I'm so moved to be here. Um, and so honored to have the chance to share my little story with you all too. And just um, feeling it all very deeply um, in honoring my, my dear friend and sister. I'll say that I, I met Avon in 1980. We became fast friends hiking on Mount Tam with my dog, who she named Zinger, um, taking mini retreats together at Lake Tahoe, doing vision quest at a crystal mine in Arkansas. And of course, um, talking about all the most important things and meditating, meditating. I don't recall what year it was, um, but it was very early 80s. At some point, she told me she had had a vision for something that she was calling Pathways to Peace. And she asked if I would sit with her and help her bring it onto paper. <laughs> and of course, I was thrilled to serve her vision in this way. And so one day we, we met at my kitchen table at my house in Forest Knolls in Marin County, and she 
let all that she was seeing about this pathways to peace just flow out as I took notes. <laughs> and so it was a birthing. It was her, it was really her birthing of this vision. And I was so honored to be her midwife. <laughs> and so there, there it was. And, and then I watched and witnessed as she brought it into the world and, and look at what has happened. She, she really amazed me at how profoundly she could just show up and encourage and reach out as so many of you have have noted it was a few years later from that time that i invited avon to participate in a telepathy experiment that i was part of these were the good old 80s right a group of us in california were um um connecting with a group of healers in Tbilisi, Georgia, in the Soviet Union. And we were connecting uh, telepathically to send and receive images um, as part of our effort at track two diplomacy to thaw the relations between the US and the Soviet Union during the Cold War. And we all uh, fell in love with our Russian counterparts. And it was Avon who coined the term telepathy to describe the nature of the real work that we were doing. And the scientists who were overseeing the project really dismissed us, saying that our emotional connection was compromising the accuracy of the experiment. But we knew that this was just the thing that was really actually facilitating a real connection and, and made the whole thing um, effective. So after this, Avon and I and our group traveled to Soviet Georgia, where we met our friends in person and forged some lifelong friendships. And the telepathy project continued for another couple of years. Um, and I've come to see that this was really the very beginning of what became all the synchronized meditations that I and so many others who are on this call have led globally ever since. That we planted a seed at that time that has grown ex so extensively. Um, and we, we just wanted to maintain this and sustain this loving connection that we felt with our Russian friends and share it with the world and cultivate um, a global intention for planetary peace. And so we did that. And it rippled out and it continues to ripple out in all of the ways that each and every one of you who are on this call are um, embodying. And so, yes, may we carry her spirit in all that we do going forward and for the rest of our lives and planting those seeds of peace wherever we are. Thank you, Cynthia. Gratitude to everyone for these beautiful, beautiful shares. And you know, we are so fortunate to have uh, many uh, musicians with us as well at this event. Merrill Collins met Avon in 1985 and later became composer in residence for Pathways to Peace, 1987 and 1988. And during that time, many songs were written and performed. Merle, we are so grateful you are here with us and are going to share with us Minute of Silence, which you have dedicated to Avon. Please welcome Merle Collins. Thank you, everybody. Um, while I've been with you, Avon was talking to me and she said, make sure you play the introduction. Uh, I was inspired at the time of the harmonic convergence to 
to record pieces of music and give them to people. And this particular introduction to the song, Minute of Silence, was a gift to Avon. And I'll play that first uh, so you can hear it. That's a vibration that was coming off an emerald that was implanted in the core of the planet at the time of, of the harmonic convergence. And the vibrations of it was to help heal the, the whole planet. And so I put that as the introduction to this song, which Minute of Silence, uh, I wrote this as a gift for Avon on her birthday. Uh, I was working with children at the time I met Avon and of course, we all know she was just love children. And, and I wrote this in such a way, and I don't know if you all, you all could participate in this, but I figured, okay, if there's really a minute of silence in the future of this planet, three-year-olds need to be able to do it, right? So I wrote this song in a way that I could teach it, and I actually did, to three-year-olds. So I sing a line, you sing a line, I sing along, you sing a line, then the children who weren't able to do 60 seconds right away at three years old, they do 10. They count them like it's a little game. And then at the end of 10, one of them rings a little bell. And then you go to 20, then you go to 30, then you go to 40. And you know, finally, when they get to 60, they're all ringing their bells and everybody's like made it to. to. So anyway, um, this is the song. And I, I'm not going to make you go through 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, <laughs> but I'll sing a line, you sing a line. Here you go. Minute of silence. Moment of sound. Making a concert. All the earth. Gorgeous. Thank you so much, Meryl. I, I, I think I could probably begin with the little kids and get about 10 seconds with a lot of good coaching from you. But uh, I needed that coaching from Avon too. And she was up to the task. I'm guessing you could even get me singing a little bit. Thank you for the beauty of, of that music. Um, it's, it's now a joy to uh, welcome not only a, a dear friend of Avon's, but whose a spouse was a dear friend of Avon's. And we're going to get to hear from both of them tonight, which is a, a, a wonderful gift, uh, Barbara Muller. Barbara, welcome. Thank you. You know, um, Robert and I fell in love at La Casa de Maria during a retreat called the big picture because Robert always felt that if we all understood that we're all part of the bigger picture then we would be able to bring peace to our planet and when we were at the 50th anniversary of the United Nations in San Francisco Avon reminded me of the time we met 
And I remember coming into this wonderful group of world, the Assembly for Peace and all the other things that she had started. And I thought, I wonder if I'm going to fit in. Am I going to be part of this group that wants peace on the planet? And she said, welcome, sister, in that beautiful voice with her beautiful smile. And that began our relationship that was carried on mostly by phone because Robert and I lived for 17 years in the United Nations and in Costa Rica where we started the University for Peace. But that phone was my connection to this beautiful woman. And when I would hear her voice and she would say, you know, Robert's archives belong in Santa Barbara. And I would say, okay, Abe, and I'm gonna work on it. Well, what's coming to be is in 2023 on March 11th, we will be celebrating Robert's 100th anniversary. And we're going to do a duel. One is going to be in the University for Peace, on March 11th, we're going to have a full day devoted to happiness because Robert was happy. He was the prophet of hope at the United Nations and he always smiled and he always, people would say, how can you be so happy when the world is so wrong? Because I'm working in my mind on the world I want to see for the rest of my life. And he would always tell people that. And then we're going to have a moment in Santa Barbara, where we fell in love at La Casa de Maria on the 12th. And there's so many people who are coming forth to remind us of Avon's path, Avon's path that always intersected with Robert. I can remember so many times when they would just be hugging and I'd just be so grateful that they were both alive at the same time. And so today I'm gonna to read the poem that Robert dedicated to Avon and it was called Decide to be happy by Robert Mueller from his book. Decide to be happy, render others happy, proclaim your joy, love passionately your miraculous life. Do not listen to promises. Do not wait for a better world. Be grateful for every moment of life. And as I look at each of you, I know you are. Switch on and keep on the positive buttons in yourself. Those mark optimism, serenity, confidence, positive thinking, and my favorite, love. Pray and thank God every day. Meditate, smile, laugh, whistle, sing, dance. Look with fascination at everything. Fill your lungs and heart with liberty. Be yourself fully and immensely. Act like a king or queen until death. Feel God in your body, mind, heart, and soul. And be convinced of eternal life and resurrection. And I am waiting for that day when I can hold Robert in my arms again and give Avon a big kiss. Thank you all of you for being part of my life, for your passion that is coming through us through Zoom. And thank you, Avon, for creating the pathways to peace. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Barbara. That was, that was absolutely lovely. And you, you talked about uh, this shared sense of the world I want to see. And I think what uh, connects you and Robert and Avon and all of us is it's not just the world we want to see, but it's the world we do see. It's just that it doesn't align with our vision a lot of the time. And that's where the work is. So the, the only thing in that, that beautiful poem, I don't think I ever heard Avon whistle, but other than that, pretty much all of it was, was right on target. I would now like to invite another great visionary uh, with feet on the ground, Gordon Davidson, to offer his remembrance. Gordon, welcome. Unmute, okay. <clears throat> am I unmuted? Yes, I am. Thank you so much for inviting me to be part of this incredible event. And I 
there are so many of you who could be speaking and I know there's so many who probably wanted to. And I feel so deeply honored to be able to share a few things from my experiences of Avon and many of them are resonant with what everyone has been saying and it's so beautiful to hear. And <clears throat> I, I knew Haven for 25 years. We worked on many projects together. We created many different initiatives and she was a dear friend and dear co-creative partner on many, many projects. And uh, as you all know, she was brilliant at doing all of that. <laughs> um, but I, I had an, another relationship with Avon also, I have had in the recent past, because after she passed, I was able to communicate with her. And I have been communicating with her and I <clears throat> told her that I was going to be speaking at this event and asked her if there was things she would like to share with the group from her new location. You know, death is like a change of address. <laughs> and so here we are. She's now in a new location working with much more freedom and much more joy, probably. Well, she had a lot of joy, but certainly with a lot more ability to reach far wider realms. So that's what I want to share with you, what she had to say about her new location. So I, I, I started out and I asked her, well, how are you feeling? <clears throat> she said, I am filled with joy being able to serve from my new position. Can you describe what that is in your work? Yes, the most glorious result of this new location is the ease with which I can connect with so many dedicated soul servers everywhere on earth. There are no limits to communication with those who are open and understand the true nature and reality of oneness through life in all of its very many dimensions. <clears throat> so what is the nature of the work that you're doing? Energetic, mental, and so soul support, no surprise there, for all those who give themselves to the healing and upliftment of all life on earth. It seems to me that we are very close, this is myself, it seems to me very we are very close to a major revelation in the anchoring of the new world on earth. That is so, and we are all contributing to that ascending upliftment on both sides of the spirit earth life. I am so filled with gratitude for the dedicated team of blessed servers who have volunteered to carry forward the sacred work of peace building. <clears throat> I know that your hearts, minds, and souls are deeply aligned with Pathways vision of reaching across boundaries of nationality, age, race, or class to join together with all who hold a vision of a truly peaceful, loving, and fulfilling world for all of us. And I know that as a united group, you are a powerful and unstoppable field of loving divine intention that is contributing mightily to the fulfillment of this vision of world peace and loving living in the oneness of spirit. I and so many glorious beings in this world of spirit are always with you, guiding, protecting, uplifting, and inspiring you all as we build a new heaven on earth together. <clears throat> as the perceived presence of spirit grows, held by ever increasing numbers of people who are awakening, the boundaries between spiritual and worldly life will continue to dissolve. In this awakening to the oneness of life, of all kingdoms, in all dimensions, in all times, for all people and all life on earth, lies the spiritual liberation of earth. Please know that all who serve through pathways and in many other ways have my and the entire spiritual kingdom's love, guidance, support, 
and blessings always. And it is the union of kingdoms that is bringing about the transfiguration of Earth and humanity into a radiant planet, fulfilling its true destiny as a beautiful creative home for joyous living, fully anchored in the illumined world of form and spirit, fused in radiant oneness, together singing our song of unity and love. So that's Avon's perspective on what's going on here. <laughs> Oh, bless you, Gordon, for thank you bringing, for bringing that to us. So deeply appreciated. So deeply appreciated. And now we welcome Gary Malkin, who is a multiple Emmy award-winning composer, performer, public speaker, and music and health innovator, who empowers the world to embrace music and sound strategies as catalysts for health, wellness, cross-cultural peace building, and a reconnection to what matters most. Gary, thank you for being with us. Over to you. Oh my God, oh my God. What riches we're all being blessed with. Gordon, I haven't seen you in so long. Masanko, Charles, all of you, what a thrill. Well, in the interest of time, I'll jump right, jump right in it. I have a song that I have sung at memorials for almost 40 years, but it's never had a fourth verse before, or a third verse. And I, t this afternoon, wrote these lyrics, and for the first time I'm singing this last verse for Avon. And it goes, oh, your light has shown the way. Oh, we'll walk the path of peace each day. Right, we all know you're right beside us now and forever. Oh, we love your ways. So. That's what's for Avon. Hopefully it'll stay with this song forever. This is for you, Avon, who I've known thanks to David Wick since the mid 80s. Thank you, David, for the amazing introduction. I love you. Avon, this is for you and for all of us. Oh, oh, I love your ways. Oh, oh I want to spend my days in your warm embrace. Feel your grace, fill my time. Oh, I've seen you laugh and cry. Oh, I've seen you light the sky. I've learned to love your gentle way. Know your courage. You laugh at fate. You go your own way. Without a word, I always knew I'd share your dreams and feel your mercy for all I did. Walk the path of peace each day. We 
know you're always right beside us now and forever oh I love your ways and everyone, even if it's on mute. Let's sing. Oh, telepathy at its finest. We love, we will always love your ways. Oh. Thank you, thank you, dear Gary. Yes, we do feel Avon beside us, especially this evening when we're all gathered in love for her. Thank you so much for the beautiful song. You know, uh, the United Nations headquarters was Avon's temple. And I'm deeply moved to see this evening so many people on this call with us who prayed together with Avon at the United Nations. This is something only the NGOs do, so <laughs> you know what I mean. It, it, she always brought that profound spirit of peace with her. But of course, the United Nations is much more than that. It is a place as Cynthia said, to plant seeds. And nothing was more important to Avon at the United Nations than to make sure that the voices of young people were heard. So it's my pleasure to welcome the next speaker who has literally brought hundreds of young people to the United Nations and taught them what it is to be a peace builder. He is serving as the main representative of Pathways to Peace to the United Nations now, and that is educator George Anthony. Thank you, dear blessed friend Deborah. Um, my journey uh, with Avon began as an educator many, many years ago in conflict transformation with my colleague, Lindy Cressatelli. And uh, we worked with such vivid peacemakers such as Alison Van Dyke and Monica Willard, and of course, uh, Blessed Deborah, and of course, the, uh, that, that neighbor. Uh, without hesitation, I can only say that spending time with Avon was genuinely sacred. Uh, Avon was a beloved mentor uh, to so many of my UN representatives, uh, too many to name right now. I know some of them are here, so I'm excited for them to, to be a part of this amazing time. And, and Avon was also a beautiful, continued supporter for the Gandhi King season for nonviolence, which is still continuing on, uh, as I think we enter into our 21st, 22nd uh, Gandhi King season for nonviolence. Um, but for me, Avon was a blessed, sacred, safe space uh, where we can just spend time together talking about how we can, we can move young people's hearts uh, to move them to become the future peace builders and peacemakers. And um, I cherish those times at Avon. And uh, it's honestly difficult thinking about going forward without the time spent, that sacred time spent with Avon. So I, the best way I can, I think I can honor Avon this evening is with a, a poem that I wrote. And I tell it Avon, our light and spiritual light of love. So it goes like this. How do I begin to describe who you are when I can only see you in my dreams? And how do I begin to describe what you meant to me when I can no longer hear your embrace? And how do I begin to describe what I am without you? There's a silence that engulfs my heart. It has replaced you, a stranger in my soul. And there are moments I see the world without your rhythms and rays of peace. But I have to learn to see again without your love knowing mine. And you need to learn to know the world again without your voice. But when I am alone in my thoughts, I remember and I am sustained by that silence. 
and I need to learn how to believe again without your breath. It is only in my prayers I find solace as each breath brings me closer to you. You gave us moments on how to live as friends, but these moments I no longer own as minutes flow to drift amongst my hopes and my fears. On that day I lost you, our Avon was taken away, but I know you joined our divine creator that day, but not before you touched my heart so deeply and caressed each of our souls so gently. And there will be a day where our spirits will once again be united, joined together in a celestial embrace of peaceful constellations, where you will forever remain immersed in our connective currents, rippling intuitively through the ebb and flow of our souls. I love you, Avon. God bless you. Thank you so much, dear George. Thank you for giving us a window into how deeply Avon touched all of our hearts. Thank you. You're welcome, Debbie. And now, of course, this program would not be complete without the voices of young people. So we are going to hear from two of the youth representatives for Pathways to Peace who have been personally mentored by Avon Madison. And the first one is Rainur Yani. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Renor, and I would like to express um, gratitude for each and every one of you for joining us today, and to everyone who helped to organize this beautiful tribute for our beloved Avon. Miss Avon Ad uh, Madison has remarkably changed my life and the lives of many others. I was blessed with the opportunity to first meet Avon early on in my activism and work when I became a Pathways to Peace representative to the United Nations. Avon, I know, was a mother to many. And for me, we quickly established a bond and she became a mentor and a mother to me. Among the many lessons of wisdom I learned from her, I learned to be re relentless in building peace locally and globally, no matter where I am and whichever capacity I have. I remember uh, we were speaking on the phone after we had just finished organizing a nuclear disarmament conference we had worked on together. And there was a very powerful moment where uh, time stood still. And she reminded me to just pause and celebrate this moment of accomplishment. And she reminded me that it's important to celebrate these accomplishments among the peace building journey. My apologies, but I was just notified that my video is on. There we go, am I back on? You are, you're back on. <laughs> Thank you. Now you're and off so, again. <laughs> and so you're off I will, again. I will off. say that she reminded me of the importance of pausing and celebrating these moments along the peace building journey. She shared memories of, of her sitting with friends after each annual International Day of Peace conference and her looking around the room along with everyone and celebrating that beautiful moment. Avon radiated light to all and had a unique ability to speak to a person's heart and soul. There are only a few people you meet in life that can understand Renor, Renor, we lost your audio. Hmm. 
I believe so. Oh, we lost your audio for a second. <laughs> I will say and, and, and repeat that there are only a few people you meet in life that you can that can understand you without having to say much. And Aben was one of them for me. She truly cared and empowered young people and often thought about the future generations. I know that this came from a genuine heartfelt place of integrity and she truly walked her talk. Regardless of anyone's age, Avon always found a way for others to participate in the process of co-creating peace and unification within different projects and peace building initiatives. She was humble and made everyone feel truly valued for their presence and contribution. Even in her elder years, she was constantly working to uplift others and go create a local, global, and universal future of peace, regardless of her physical condition. She is a true example of a leader who has held a lifelong dedication to being in service to humanity. What I know for sure is that Avon is eternal. Avon is the graceful wind, the ringing sound of peace bells, the sounds that birds sing in the morning, and the eternal love that is in our hearts and souls. I am eternally grateful to Avon for profoundly changing my life, for all of the teachings that were shared with me, and for all the ways she has shined light upon my life and the whole world. I love you unconditionally, Nina. Thank you. Thank you, Renoir. What a magnificent tribute to your mentor. I can hear her speaking through you. And she must be so proud that you are helping to represent Pathways to Peace. Thank you. And now we have another young voice to hear from, and her name is Betsabe Reina. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Excuse my tears. I am very, very grateful to be here and to speak to all of you. We truly lost one of the most powerful people in the world. As we all know, Avon had accomplished so much within the United Nations and outside of the United Nations. George Anthony, who previously spoke, introduced Avon to me. And my world has shifted ever since. Our relationship was only over the phone. And she spoke encouragement and wisdom into my soul every time we sat to talk. Avon was not merely just the president of Pathways to Peace, but she was also a mentor, a colleague, friend, fellow peacemaker, and even mother figure. Her warmth, wisdom, and strength will live on through each of the lives that she encouraged and poured into. Avon gave the best of who she was always. Her legacy of a peacemaker and leader will remain a true inspiration to youth all around the world and everyone who knew her. She flew the flag of peace, of love, of light, and intergenerational collaboration. Avon Madison will be deeply missed now and forevermore. And as long as I can, I will continue to fight for all the marginalized protecting the rights of people around the world, because that is not only my heart, but her heart for mine too. Thank you. Mm. How beautiful, Atsabi. Thank you so much. Your words touch our hearts deeply. It is now a joy to welcome Ray Anderson, who will share John Lennon's Imagine. Ray shared with us that he is humbled 
to be asked to perform on behalf of such a transcendental human being. Ray is known to those adorable little people around us as Mr. Ray, and he has been writing and performing songs for children and their families for over 25 years with the undertow of kindness, inclusion, being creative, and peace. Welcome, Ray. Hi. It's an honor to be here on behalf of the light that is Avon. Imagine there's no heaven It's easy if you try Ray, thank you so very much for that. You know that when you sing and play that, it always brings me to my knees and into tears, and particularly tonight. We all know that the best way to honor Avon is to rededicate ourselves to the work for peace, the work to build that culture of peace that she was holding in her own vision for such a very long time. At this particular time, we're going to talk a little bit. We're going to have David Wick share a little bit about that vision, Imagine a World, which we call the peace card that has driven our work at Pathways to Peace all of these years. And also, where do we go from here to continue the work that Avon has instilled in our hearts. David. Thank you very much, Hezekiah. Thank you for everyone for this amazing expression and, and reflection and heartfelt um, honoring uh, Avon. 
And Avon Kane is a transformer of consciousness. If you think about it, transforming consciousness, evolving consciousness. What's being said tonight is a reflection of that in all of us. And that is the continuation of her, her legacy, but also the spark that was ignited in each of us, we continue, we move forward. And one of the, the gifts of Avon were also manifesting different ways of expressing that consciousness and that moving forward and the positive thinking and peace building and peace in our hearts where it all begins. There's a peace wheel that was created over time. I worked with David and, and Joni and others from the very beginning of Pathways. One of them, as Tezekiah mentioned, was a, um, a vision and it's called Imagine a World and the, the uh, Imagine a World uh, Peace Card. And I'll read it through with you. Imagine a world where governments respect the rights of all their citizens and settle disputes by the law, the rule of law for the common good. Where people have food, shelter, and access to medical care, and children are born into and raised by healthy families of, and communities. Where literacy and education for all are accomplished facts where economic practices create well-being for all shareholders, stakeholders, including communities and the environment, where beauty, the arts, and media inspire the best in people, where the benefits of science and technology enhance all circles of life, where tolerance and appreciation of diverse religious beliefs is the rule spiritual practice is encouraged and reverence for life fostered. Where the earth in all her natural beauty is treasured and its resources utilized sustainably for this and future generations. This is a world at peace. May peace prevail on earth. You are a pathway to peace. This was the inspiration, this is the guidance, this is the coming together of Avon's influence. And with that comes the question to our um, council of directors on November 11th, we met after Avon's passing to consider what now, what does this mean? Avon is such a, a central figure, but you think about what we're all, we're all talking about, the foundation that has been established through Pathways to Peace, through the different activities, through the different structures that have been created, the infrastructures for peace that have been created. And it was a unanimous, yes, Pathways to Peace will continue. Pathways to Peace will proceed, building upon what was created with and from Avon and building upon what we all bring, because it's not just Ava. What she inspired again is the transition, transformation of consciousness that we bring, each of us in our hearts, into the world as we make our own contributions daily in the choices that we make. So, thank you. Thank you, Ava, and on we go. Thank you. And on we go. Thank you so much, David. David is an officer on the Pathways to Peace Council and has been with Pathways to Peace for many, many, many years. Thank you. So at this point, I'd like to bring back into our camera, our ministerial team. So uh, please come forward. And I'm going to put this next piece in your hands. Charles? Thank you, Tez. Um, well, it seems to me that in, in some way, we, we've been able to fudge the time and space limitations a little bit. And we're going to bring this in at just about 90 minutes because uh, we're on the home stretch here. And blessings to everyone who had to leave, blessings to everyone who stayed, and blessings to that realm beyond this realm where 
the people are always with us. I'd like to pluck two, two pieces and offer a poem. Uh, one piece, uh, Cynthia talked about the moment she, she served as a scribe. And she talked about serving Avon's vision and what a gift that was. And Cynthia, I think one of the reasons that was a gift and a gift for all of us is that it wasn't just Avon's vision. It was a vision for all of us. And that was the joy of Avon's life in so many ways was that she held what she held so clearly with such a great invitation. Find this in yourself because it's there. Uh, I was transfixed, uh, Tammy, watching your fingers pluck the strings of a harp and make such beautiful music. Well, we are all strings of a divine harp. And all we're asked is to vibrate in our unique way and trust that the big hands that are plucking the strings of this harp will make the music that will help transform the world. And with that, this poem, each of us will die one day. It doesn't matter. More important is to practice living. Still all that does not serve our truest becoming. Listen to the music of the universe inviting us to begin the dance that is ours alone. The beloved has been waiting from before time for our first step, for our next step. No matter our age, our life is new in this moment. Let us dance. Deborah. Thank you, Charles. Beautiful. And thank you, Dot. Uh, thank you, my fellow ministerial team here. <laughs> uh, and thank you to everyone who spoke because I just felt Avon's presence so beautifully through everyone's expression of what she meant to you and through the hearts of all of you who didn't speak. Uh, I, I always felt fortunate because as, as Avon's, one of Avon's mentees, I had her over my shoulder. And I feel that even more strongly now. And I know all of you feel that, 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 that her presence is so palpable among us. And uh, she never wanted to be out front. She always wanted that position. And now she's graduated so that she can fulfill that mission even more powerfully for every one of us, being there to encourage us and to ask, how may I serve? As she always has. And I, I, I feel like this wouldn't be complete if we didn't bring up the International Day of Peace, which was Avon's gift to the world. She didn't create it by herself, but she kept that spirit alive. She kept it going uh, until it caught on like a, like a flame, catching on and, and really becoming a hallmark of the peace community all over the world. And Avon used to say that we should celebrate until every day becomes peace day. And that's what I think we did today in Avon's honor. So uh, we have another beautiful presentation, deeply reflective of Avon's spirituality. And I pass the baton to my soul sister, Dot Mabel. Mm. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Charles, Tez, Becky, Richard, and we could name everyone in this beautiful, Zoom celebration. What a joyful sharing and celebration it's been. And so as we are coming to a close now of this beautiful time together, I just want to note that along with other spiritual paths that Avon drew inspiration from, 
For most of her adult life, she was a serious student and practitioner of the discipleship path outlined in the teachings of Alice Bailey and the path of living ethics in the Agni Yoga teachings. And it is through that ageless wisdom that we met. And it is a continuing joyful shared journey. This quote from one of the Alice Bailey books makes me think of Avon's journey. And we felt it and heard it over and over again in this wonderful event. The work you have to do is to take the knowledge which is yours and adjust its application to the world's need so that recognition of the truth may be rapid. In the heart of every human being lies hid the flower of the intuition. On that you can depend, and no eternal or cosmic fact, clothed in a suitable form, will fail to receive its need of recognition and understanding. Didn't Avon live this beautifully? And now we all know ourselves as pathways to peace. Another of those recognitions for dear Avon was the Great Invocation, a world prayer for peace introduced in 1945 and used by people of goodwill everywhere. We would often remind one another that the phrase, let light and love and power restore the plan on earth in this powerful great invocation actually refers to the Buddha, light, the spirit of peace, love, and the avatar of synthesis, power. So we invite you now to join us. Let us together sound the great invocation, a world peace prayer. And let us be mindful that as we invoke, we can anticipate an evocative response. So it will be on the screen so everyone can see it. The great invocation. <laughs> From the point of light, from the point of light, mind God, let the light stream forth in the minds of men, light and light on earth. Center, which we call the human face. Let the plan of love and light work. And seal the door where evil dwells. Light and love and power. Restore the land and earth. the plan. You know, each of you has inspired me and continues to do so. There are really no words to express how much I am deeply touched, not only by what you've said, but just by the privilege of being with each of you, uh, allowing me to work alongside you. And to know that we are all sharing a, a, the same purpose, but each of us has our different facets to bring to it. So we already, we really were and really are a sacred circle acting in concert with one another. And um, I just wish that we could have a, a, an entire day where 
I could then honor every single one of you <laughs> and tell you how much you were touching my life. And I also just again want to quote uh, Chief Hereditary Chief Phil Lane. You know, when we harm one, we harm all, but to honor one is to honor all. So I honor each and every one of you. Once again, in her own words, thank you, Avon, for that amazing blessing. As it should be, because this was very important to Avon, we are going to close our sacred ceremony with the peace wave. I don't need to tell you any more about the peace wave as it has come up repeatedly in Avon's own words and in the words of others. Suffice to say that the peace wave is a tool that we can all employ in our daily practice to make peace day every day. And so we are going to um, spend just a little time. And what's going to happen is in a moment, um, Deborah uh, is going to lead us in a meditation for the Peace Wave. And she's going to be accompanied by our beautiful Pathways to Peace Harpist, Tammy Briggs. And the Peace Wave is celebrated typically at noon in all time zones, creating this beautiful image of a wave that washes over our world. And even though it might not be 12 noon in your time zone right now, we want you to consider as a daily practice from this point forward, if you're not already, to come together in unified action in our peace way at 12 noon to make peace day every day. You are a pathway to peace. Thank you. Oh, one more thing. After we conclude the peace wave, you'll be able to leave in silence, holding in that beautiful sacred energy and that sense of being at one with not only those of us here in this time, in this sacred circle, but one with all that is. We invite Deborah to unmute herself, please. As we breathe in the beautiful strains of the harp, we breathe in the spirit of peace. the love for Avon, our love for her, 
your love for us. Expand our hearts. Until we are radiating love. We feel ourselves rising, rising to a higher frequency where we feel Aiden's presence. ourselves looking down on the beautiful planet Earth and seeing the light of the planet herself growing stronger with our love and our prayers for peace. the earth flourishing with our shared vision of our planetary home as a place of healing, of clean water and rich nourishing soil, of beautiful fresh air and abundance of life. We see the plants and the animals and all of humanity living together in a dream of peace that is becoming a reality. We see the beautiful Indra's net of connections of all of the peace builders around the world. And we feel that spirit of Avon in every heart with the burning desire for peace on earth. And as we see this magnificent flourishing of all life, we know that we all have become a pathway to peace. And that peace is becoming a reality for our whole world and beyond. Empowered by Avon's inspiration and all of the unseen forces of love and peace that fill our hearts, that fill our souls. We live to our closing words as we say silently in our hearts together, May peace prevail on earth. May peace prevail on earth. May peace prevail on earth.